From the Rainbow Theatre to the UK and the world. The journey of faith of the campaign of revolt on Mount Sinai. The arrival on Sinai was marked by revolt. God's revolt against the people's unbelief. Moses revolt so that God would not cease to go with them. And the people's revolt for having not yet seen the promised land. However, while Moses' revolt was driven by his faith, the revolt of a majority of the people was fueled by doubts and expressed through mere complaints. Pure sentiments of victimhood. The people felt powerless as they focused on what they did not have but did not seek God for a resolution. The revolt that moves the hand of God is not sentimentality. It's an impulse of faith that arrives from a violent reaction against injustice and materializes in an act of total surrender. Those who are revolted believe so strongly that they boldly and determinedly pursue their rights. They trust in the world that does not fail, as pledged by God who cannot lie. To see this fulfilled, they are willing to make any sacrifice. For them, it's all or nothing. Life or death. They do not see the problem as natural. They see the problem as an affront. Therefore, they throw themselves with all their might into a perfect sacrifice on the altar, the place where earth and heaven touch, the meeting point between the creator and the creature, where the revolt turns into victory, with the absolute certainty that what God has promised, he will fulfill. A very good evening to all of you. May God bless you abundantly. And we are now getting closer and closer to the day when we will leave here on the altar our lives, our old lives, so that with the Spirit of God in those who don't have Him yet, they shall become new people. And for those who have the Spirit of God, that they will see the glory of God in their lives like never before. In fact, speaking of the glory of God, and we've been speaking about this the past couple of days, and Sunday now will be the Sunday of the glory of God. But tonight, I want to speak to you about the glory of God in a way that perhaps you haven't understood or you never stopped to think before. We have the pastors of our churches connected with us. You can see them on the screen, connected via Zoom. And in a few moments after the testimony, Pastor Yemi from our church in Hammersmith will be here on the altar and will be talking about this point of the glory of God in a way that you've never seen before. But first of all, before we do anything, even though you may have watched this testimony today in the service, let's watch it again because... I believe for many people, this testimony has been a way of opening their eyes to their own reality. Let's watch this testimony from our church there in Oxford. I arrived in the Promised Land and I went back to Egypt. I have a, a very good family. I have four siblings, but father, my father always struggled very much for uh, providing for us. But we always united. But when I, when I was 17, he died. And um, the suffering started because we found out that the house was just broken. Everything just fell apart and everybody just went their way. And then when I got at the age of 20, I got involved with some girls. They were prostitutes and I didn't know that. Through that, I got involved in this situation as well. Until I was 21, that I got pregnant. 
and I didn't know who was the father of my daughter. I didn't come back to my mother's house until my daughter was already six months old because I didn't want to give problems to anybody. I said, no, I can do this, but I didn't. And when I arrived home with my daughter, she was six months old, my mother was invited to church because my house was just destroyed. And my mother started to come to church. I went with mom, my, my sisters, and, and then in a moment, in less than one year, everybody was in the church. And then God opened the doors. He started moving his hand towards the family and things got very improved. It was very good. So I was doing very well at the church, going out, evangelizing. I saw that I had the Holy Spirit, you know, because I was very active in the church and the pastor raised me as an assistant. And uh, I had a friend, she invited me to come to, to UK. So we came to London and uh, it was very good at the beginning. I was coming to church still, but I started uh, getting a lot of jobs. I did a, a lot of working, you know, and then I was just going to work. And then when I saw I was too tired to come to church. After nine years in the church, in the universal church serving, I went back to Egypt. In the beginning was very good, I didn't have a problem, I was just working and uh, earning money, providing for my family. I was sending money back home. I didn't have that thirst to come to church anymore. I didn't have that desire to come to church. To sin was become natural. I was just sinning, got getting involved with men, gone back to prostitution as I did before. And then when I met my, was when I met my husband. And uh, I was already here for about four years. And, uh, and then he said to me, go to Brazil, go to see your family. I come to see you later. And then I thought to myself, I think this man wants to get rid of me. But he was nice. I, I, I followed his advice and I went to Brazil. And when I got in Brazil, and uh, it was very difficult to see my daughter again because and then she was already nearly 12 years old. And then she was looking in a very strange way, you know, like I abandoned her and then I was living a life that I, uh, my mother is never gonna come back to be with me. It was very hurtful to see that, but I, I didn't see that. I was like, I was providing for her. I was giving a life that I didn't have for her. So what's she complaining about it? It was very difficult for me to to, to be a mother again, you know, to see my daughter, and then to, because I wasn't being a model, I wasn't being an example for her. I still was going to the church there with my family, but I was, I was just like, uh, my mind was just still in Egypt. I was coming and going uh, because I came to see my husband then, we were dating, and then he came to Brazil and then he asked me marriage. But the point, the most important thing that by then it was already seven years that I was out of the church. I was having everything. I was having a husband, I was having a lovely house, but at the day of my wedding, it should be a blessing day, a very nice day for any bride, but it wasn't that for me. In the day of my wedding, my wedding dress on, I put my head on the floor, God, I'm having this, but I'm not having you. I needed to go back, I needed to have a peace because there was like a situation in my mind. It was really, really hurting because I didn't want to, to, to like it, to make it like a life of a prostitution. So maybe God will bless me. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to do right. So I want to come back to church. So I, I decided to come back to church. I came back and that was very good. In the beginning, my husband did criticize me a lot, but later on, he said, I'm gonna follow her. So he came to church with me. So from the Egypt, there was I, once again, in the desert, towards the Promised Land. So being back at the church, I started to take part of the campaigns, campaigns of Israel and the uh, fast of Daniel. I did uh, purposes, for my, my marriage, for my family, for myself. And then years gone and years comes out and things were still missing. The thing was really ticked when my pastor started doing a purpose. The purpose was that we would surrender ourselves, submit to God, 
so the devil would flee from us. So after a few days doing that, and there was one particular day that I, and I, I said, well, you know what? I had enough. He started just showing me who I really was. So then, it was one evening after the Liberty Radio program, Pastor said to us, put your head on the ground and submit to God. At that night, I wake up in the middle of the night at 1.30 in the morning with this most horrible fear that I had, the fear of the Lord. So I put my head on the ground again and God really spoke to me that day. He did show me the ugly person that I was, the fake, the religiosity, the hypocrisy that I've been all these years being in the church for about 12 years. I wasn't scared about the, the devil. I was scared before God. I said, my God, what I'm doing with my life? So the next morning I sent a message to my pastor and I spoke to him. And then I said to him, you know, pastor, I am a fake. I don't want to live this life anymore. I had enough. I don't want to live like it is because I'm dying. I am dying and I'm going to hell. When I spoke to pastor and he said, but why do you think like this? Because that's what I am, pastor and I need your help, and I'm taking my mask here for you. Because God showed me that I am ugly, that I have no salvation, and that was the most horrible and sad thing that a person can realize. That was my moment of sincerity that I had before God. That evening, he made a strong prayer for me. I did not manifest with any evil, but I left the church already. I said, God, you are wonderful because I had peace already. And I said, if I die today, I'm saved and then I'm happy. That day, I did not hear anybody else's voice in that church, but my voice. And I knew that day God heard me because I did cry out for him with all my heart, all my understanding, because it's a sad thing. You'll be inside of the church for so long, you know, having His presence inside of you. That must happen. So then the campaign of Israel was taking part. I was inside of the envelope already. But this time I said, I must come down off this altar a new, a new person. And God fulfilled my desire of my heart because He knew that I had this day would happen to me, would come to me. Just like Nicodemus, perhaps, you must be born of water and the Spirit. I want to get baptized. So the next Sunday, I wasn't. I hide myself in the toilet in the church with my gown, and I said, tell pastor that I'm ready when he is. When I went in the pool, I was already washed away. When the pastor poured out the water on my head, it was like, it was like just most wonderful, wonderful joy wonderful joy just came over me. That was just the Holy Spirit washing me out and making me new again. And then I said, glory be to God. So I was just before all the people on the church, and I was I there, just full of the joy that God accepted me. I, was, I just didn't care about anyone. I just cared about my soul. The following days, Bishop Macedo was doing his service at three o'clock in the morning in the temple. I was taking part as well. I was doing everything. I was giving my all. I was so tired physically, but spiritually I was so strong. The same week at nine o'clock in the evening, I put a service again for the Bishop Macedo. And then I was listening and it, that was the day that I received the Holy Spirit. This happiness, this joy, this, this love that I received, this amazing grace that He had for us, it doesn't, it doesn't leave me. And when I go now, when I go evangelizing, it's just like, you no know, me talking. And I'm so delightful to be here and sharing with everybody because now I know what is to have the presence of God, what is to have the real promised land, the, the new Jerusalem inside of me. I know now how it is. My family is a blessing. My marriage is a blessing. I have a, a, a great relationship with my daughter and she is assistant of the church together with her husband. They both serve 
God. I have a blessed family and then everybody is, is being supported by the altar because the, the altar it doesn't fail. I am a blessed wife today. I, I look at my husband and I, get, I have the, a new love for him now because I have the love of the Father inside of me. Even for him, my love towards him is, is something amazing, you know. I am a blessed person today. I just wanted that everybody have this because it's a wonderful thing to have the presence of God inside of us. You see, 13 years in the church without knowing who God is. Because the reality is that when a person is not full of the Spirit of God, they don't know who God is. It's the same thing as you talking about someone and, and, and trying to describe that person without knowing that person. And you see that when a person finally has an encounter with God through the baptism with the Holy Spirit, then there is a total transformation. But speaking about the glory of God, I would like to read here two verses with you. 2 Corinthians 3, 17 says, Now the Lord is Spirit. The Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. You see that when a person has the baptism with the Spirit of God, they have this glory of God in them. And here, speaking about we all with unveiled face, is making a reference to Moses when he came down from Mount Sinai because his face was shining and eventually his face was covered with a veil. Later on, that shine was no longer there. It disappeared. But when a person receives the Spirit of God, when the glory of God is inside someone through the baptism with the Holy Spirit, like the Bible says here, we go from glory to glory and we are transformed into the same image of the Lord Jesus. Anytime we try to have the image of the Lord Jesus without His Spirit, we can try to emulate this for a few days or weeks, sometimes even months, which was the case of Miss Arlette. I have here Pastor Yemi with me. Pastor Yemi, good evening. Bishop. Uh, the interesting thing about Miss Arlette is that when she came to the church initially, she became an assistant. Note, she didn't have the Holy Spirit. She thought she did. And people around her thought that she did. And for, if I'm not mistaken, for nine years, she was in the church thinking she had the Holy Spirit. But what she was doing really was to emulate the appearance of someone who was baptized with the Holy Spirit. And I don't believe that her intention was wicked or evil. She was deceived. And the thing is, when a person doesn't have the Spirit of God, Pastor Yemi, they can emulate this appearance. And in, in Miss Arlette's case, she did that for nine years. But when the Spirit of God takes possession of a person, like the Bible says here, we are transformed into the same image from glory to glory. The glory of the face of Moses disappeared. But those who have the Holy Spirit, they are transformed from glory to glory. This glory, this shine never ends. We look at her today and we can actually see the glory of God. We can see in her appearance. We wouldn't even guess and with all, res with all respect the life that she said that she lived as a prostitute, we wouldn't even guess that she had that life. Because now you can see the glory of God. Bearing in mind the life that she had before of prostitution, different men, and so on and so forth. Now, when she became an assistant and started serving God, 
you can see that she didn't really have an encounter with God. She didn't really know God. So when someone doesn't know God, they run a huge risk, a huge risk of ending up where she ended up, Bishop. Yeah, and do you know the, the, the thing is, Pastor Yemi, you were talking here, and I was just remembering how it can be easy for someone to look like they are happy. Because, you know, in the world, when you achieved something, you buy a new car, for a few days, your face lights up when you see that car. And then it goes back to normal, just the car. When you get married, we were explaining about this in, in the service tonight when it came to the love therapy, that you have a wedding and you have marriage. These are two different things. When a person gets married, her face lights up in the first few days, it's great. But unless this joy comes from the Spirit of God, that shine will not be from glory to glory. And, you know, we have people right now, Pastor Yemi, connected with us, who know what it is to have money. Maybe, dear friend, you have money. You've had money. Maybe you don't have now. But you've had money. You had success. You had things that when people looked at you, temporarily you looked happy. But not from glory to glory, not a happiness that rolls over every day, even in the struggles, even in the battles. And a perfect example of this is the message of Bishop Macedo. Every time we watch Bishop Macedo's message on Instagram, he takes the Bible and when he starts reading the Bible, he starts to laugh, <laughs> right? But we don't know the battles that he, he goes through so many problems. He has to deal with so many problems, so many things. But you see, from glory to glory every day, that joy is renewed. Pastor Yemi, this is what God wants to do with this person who maybe is not a church person. Or maybe they are. It doesn't matter. The person ha has had glimpses of happiness, moments of happiness, but it fades out. With the Spirit of God, we go from glory to glory. Actually, the word is the novelty wears off. Yeah. New car, relationship, with all respect, even having a child, the novelty well. You have a, you have a son. Exactly. And he, he's now he's no longer a baby, is it? Yeah. He's, he's even taller than me. So the novelty wears off. But with the spirit of God, there is a constant joy inside of us. It's never ending. You could see on her face now, you could see the constant joy, the happiness inside and there's the, the novelty doesn't wear off the joy that's on her doesn't finish now yeah and maybe you say bishop this is me i've never been happy you know um arlette said that the day that she got married with her wedding dress on she went on her knees and said my god what's the point of all this i should be happy but there's something missing and maybe this is you maybe you say bishop i it's like I'm, I'm climbing a ladder that I never get anywhere. I think when I graduate from university, then I'll, I'll be fulfilled. You did. You now have the job of your dreams, the career of your dreams. You're not fulfilled. Then you think if I get married, if I buy a house, if I... And it never ends. The Spirit of God, that you have an encounter with Him when you place your life on this altar or there in the UCKG near you, that's when you receive the source of joy. Because after all, the Spirit of God is the Spirit of joy. When you receive the Spirit, ah, my friend, your face will be shining every day from glory to glory. And I'm not talking about a physical shine, but something that people can see that there is something different in you. We are going to pray right now, and I'm going to ask that uh, Pastor Matthew from our church in Cardiff will begin the prayer, and then I will conclude the prayer here on the altar with the pastors and the pastor's wives. Let's get ready to talk to God. You who've never had this happiness, you're going to talk to God now and say, my Lord, I want, I want the joy that you promised. I want to be transformed from glory to glory. I want this to never end. And you are going to find this on the altar. Let's talk to God. Let's talk to God. It's time to pray.
Lord and Father, in the name of your Son, here we are united in faith together with this person who deep down inside also has a desire to shine. Not only, Father, do they want to see the physical life change, most importantly, they want to shine within them. So we pray, Lord, that what happened to Moses will happen to this person, that all the fears, the worries, the complexes, whatever's been inside of this person, the past hurts, will be erased and removed. This person will no longer have to pretend to be happy, but your spirit, even right now, will touch them and the light, a bright light will begin to shine in this person. And when people even see this person, they will see a difference. They will see your great power shining through this person's character, through even their countenance. So in the name of the Lord Jesus, wherever this person is, Lord, if this person is home alone, if this person is listening in their bedroom, and that is all that they want for your power to come inside of them so that they can shine farther where they are, touch them right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. That is what we declare by the power of the Almighty God. Yes, my Lord. And perhaps this person can't even fathom in their mind of how happy you can make them. Because maybe this person throughout their life has had glimpses, moments of joy. But then immediately after everything falls apart. Maybe this person has no reason to be depressed and yet they are. Maybe this person has no reason to be sad and yet they are. They, they don't know how or where this hole inside of their chest comes from, my God. But the moment that your spirit comes upon those who seek you sincerely, we are transformed from glory to glory. My Father, this Sunday will be the Sunday of the glory of God. The day where many, my Father, will have an encounter with you on the altar, with your Spirit. And from that moment, from that moment, my Lord, your glory will be ever present inside of this person. My Father, we bless right now those who are connected with us. And we believe that you have heard our prayer in the name of the Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. I would just like to read here quickly a question uh, that someone wrote um, on, on the chat. Uh, and actually, if you want to write questions on the chat, anytime we have the program, you can. Someone said, if you've not come to the presence of God for years, is it possible for God to forgive you straight after you've sinned? It feels like I'm not worthy of praying. The answer is yes. You can come to God no matter how many wasted opportunities apparently you've had. And let me give you some news. I am not worthy of praying either. None of us are. There's nothing that we've done to deserve being heard by God in our prayers. But the good news is that God hears you. If there is a sincerity inside of you, God hears you. And in fact, I don't know where you're watching us from. You can go to any UCKG tomorrow. You don't have to wait for Sunday. Go to a UCKG near you. If you've been there before, you will not be judged. We have the pastors connected with us on Zoom. Any UCKG that you go to, you will be received there with love. And if you're here from our area, tomorrow, 8 p.m., we'll be here in a special love therapy. Love therapy. Bishop Alvaro will be here with us, with his wife, also talking about the experiences he's had in his marriage. Pastor Dale with his wife, who've just arrived here from Trinidad and Tobago as well. And tomorrow is an opportunity for you to return. No one should feel that they've wasted all the opportunities that they were given. Because if you're watching us now, guess what? That is a, an opportunity. And just because you're, you sat through this program, you heard what God had to say, you did not waste this opportunity. Okay? We'll see you tomorrow here in the church, 8 p.m. in Love Therapy. Otherwise, 
at 10.30 p.m. on Be Inspired. God bless you. Bye-bye. From the Rainbow Theatre to the UK and the world, the journey of faith of the campaign of revolt on Mount Sinai.